Hello there, what's going on? So Gemini Conductor is a new tool released by Google to help you build quality applications with AI. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get started with this helpful tool. Just last week, Google introduced their very own context-driven framework, completely free and exclusive for Gemini CLI, called Conductor. This tool helps you plan before you code by turning your prompt into formal specs and plans as markdown files. It keeps contacts out of the chat logs and put them inside the repo alongside your code, so Gemini will have consistent project awareness and progress. Overall, this is going to improve your code quality as well as keeping you firm in control. Up next, Conductor also support brownfield projects or already existing code bases. Most AI tools struggle with existing projects because of their lack of understanding of the project history and architecture progress. When you run it on a brownfield project, Conductor tackles this problem by initiating an interactive session to help you create a foundational set of documents about your project's architecture, guidelines, and goals. As you build new features and take on new tasks, Conductor will update the shared context, allowing the context to grow alongside your project. And what's also nice is that Conductor also enabled for team-level context, so you can let it define your product, tech stack, and workflow preferences once, so that your team can follow the same standards when working on the project. Previously, I've made a few videos on frameworks like SpecKit and OpenSpec. These are tools built around spec-driven development with AI, where instead of jumping straight into code, you first break things down into clear requirements, constraints, and execution steps. That extra structure gives the model much better context, which usually leads to better code. It's also how you get results you typically won't get from just throwing a single prompt to the AI. Now, Conductor is a new tool from Google that follows a very similar idea, but it's designed specifically around Gemini CLI, and it takes this whole context-driven approach a step further. Next, let me show you how to get started with Gemini Conductor. Now, before we jump into the exciting part, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any new videos that can really level up your skills. Also, click on the bell to get notified whenever a new video comes out. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel, you really help me make useful videos just like this one. To get started with Gemini Conductor, you need to have the latest version of Gemini CLI installed on your computer. So if you haven't already, you can simply go ahead to GeminiCLI.com and then copy this npm install command provided on the website. Open up your terminal or command line tool, paste the command, and then press enter. Let the installation run for a minute. You can go back to Gemini CLI website and then click on this extension menu. Over here, you will find all extensions that you can use with Gemini CLI. Click on the search box and then type conductor. And here's the conductor extension, so click on it to see the details. And here we can see the command to install the extension, so copy that. And back in the terminal, Gemini CLI has been installed, so we can paste the new command to install the conductor extension. Now here it says no release data, uh, do you want to install with git clone method? If you encounter the same issue, then just reply with yes. Continue the installation until you see the extension installed successfully message as shown here. Okay, it's time to run Gemini CLI, so type in Gemini, press enter, and once inside the CLI tool, run the slash extensions list command to see all available extensions. Here, we can see the conductor extension, and there is an error with the Chrome DevTools MCP, but it's okay as it won't interfere with running conductor. So now that we have verified the installation of conductor, we can actually start using the context-driven development method to build our app. Conductor adds several new custom commands, so if we run slash conductor here, there it is, we can see there are several commands that we can use. If we go back to the conductor post, we can see that the first thing we have to do is to run the setup command to describe the product guidelines, the tech stack, and the workflow. So let's just do that. Run the conductor setup command. The AI will then start by scanning the project. It might ask to run git commands as shown here, so let's just allow it. While Gemini is running, let me show you the project that's being used for this demo. Here we have an open source dashboard template created using Next.js and Material UI for styling. Let's run this application first. Now open this project on the browser, and here we can see this dashboard have several menus such as the dashboard, utilities page, and the authentication pages. 
I'm going to create another page as template using Gemini CLI, probably an e-commerce dashboard template. Okay, back in Gemini CLI, it has finished scanning the project and now it asks us a couple of questions for completing the guidelines. You will see different questions depending on your project. So for me, what is the main goal of this dashboard? I will answer with C as a template for other dashboard. Press enter and Gemini will then come up with another question. Just keep giving the right answer as they will be used to create the guidelines that will be followed by Gemini. I will skip a bit to when the setup is completed. Alright, over here the agent has finished the setup process and now it suggested the first track that we can work on this project. Now let's pause a bit here and open the project in VS Code to see the result. So here, there is a new conductor folder and it contains all the artifacts generated by the AI earlier. There is the workflow and then the text tag, the code style guide and so on. You can review and update these artifacts as you need, but anytime you run a conductor command, the AI will look into these guides and follow them when developing your application. So next, after the setup, we can create a track, which is basically a new feature or bug fix we want to work on. Back in the CLI, Gemini has suggestion for the first track here, but I actually want to do something else, so I will just say no, build an e-commerce dashboard as the first track. Submit the prompt and Gemini will work on the request. It will break down the track into several stages and tasks. And once it's finished, you can run the conductor implement command to start working on the track. Now before we do that, let's view the files real quick. So here in VS Code, we can see the new tracks folder with the first track. There is the specification written in markdown file. And then we also have the plan.md file containing the paces and tasks that will be executed step by step. As you can see, this is quite similar to SpacKit or OpenSpec, only this one is more concise and exclusive to Gemini CLI. Okay, let's go back to the terminal now and then run the conductor implement command. Gemini will then start working on the track, completing the paces and tasks step by step. This will take some time, so I will skip a bit to when it's finished. Okay, over here Gemini has completed the track. It worked on the tasks step by step, and once they're all finished, it updated the product guideline. So the next time you work in this project with Conductor, it will remember the progress and continue from there. It also asked if we want to archive or delete the track files here. Uh, let's ignore that for now and view the result. So here we can see that the tasks have been marked as completed with the X symbol. And it also recorded the git commit as checkpoints when Gemini completed that part. Let's run the git log command first. So here we can see all the changes committed by Gemini for this track, such as checkpoint for page 3, add documentation for new components, review and refactor code for the dashboard, and so on. We can also run the app to see the new page, so npm run dev. And here we have the e-commerce menu, so click on that. And this is the new dashboard template. Now, this dashboard requires many improvements. For example, we can show the product images, show how many new customers, unfulfilled orders, and so on. But for now, the important thing here is to show how to use Conductor to develop applications using context-driven development method. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can access this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. Now, there are two more commands provided by Conductor, the status command to show the current progress of the tracks file and active tracks, and the revert command to undo a track, pace, or task by analyzing git history. Now, the Conductor status command can be used when you need to be reminded of the project status. For example, suppose you continue the project a few weeks later, and then you try to run the Conductor status command, it will scan the project and then display the current pace and tasks, next action needed, what's blocking the project, and so on. And that's how Gemini Conductor works in a nutshell. If you want to learn more, go ahead and visit its GitHub repository, I will leave a link to it in the description as well. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial, now you know how to use Gemini Conductor to plan, manage, and build quality applications with Gemini CLI.
I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you learn how to code and use AI tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell, like this video, all the good stuff as it really helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end and I'll see you in other videos. Bye!